you know, if any of you have worked with me, you know that one of the main things that I that I talk about uh, all the time at nauseum is cord closure, the importance of of cord closure and the destructive nature and of the lack of adduction and how that can really um, cause a, a decay of your technique. So the support becomes the exact regulation of air pressure, um, the exact pressure needed, required to make a very specific sound. Not just any sound, but a very pure and resonant sound. And this sound requires both specific air pressure and specific resistance to the air pressure. He's identifying the closure itself and how we can discern. So using this idea of baby cough, a small cough <laughs> to kind of feel the closure, I would prefer a sounded um, movement. So, ah, 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 ah. This is a better impulse, I think, for us. But notice how he says that it's a closure and not an impulse of air. And so he advocates also the, the, um, the closing of the mouth as a way to to facilitate that. If you think, mm, mm, or, <laughs> it helps you to not rush air. If you go, huh, uh, 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 so very pulsing, that's wrong. That's, that can be very destructive because now all of a sudden you're doing this with your cords to resist air and then you're, uh, uh, you're letting air go. That's not helpful. Posterior, yeah. Do you see how in the back of the cords, there's this little opening here? Uh, I, I assume you all can see that, yes? Can you see that? So this opening is called a posterior gap. When I showed you the, the video of the cords opening and closing, I showed you that little spot. When the lateral, the lateral muscles kind of swing together, that spot will remain open unless the interretinoids kind of seal the back of the cords a little bit. But also, if you are trying to move air and the PCA, the posterior cricorytenoids, start to activate, that gap will also open up. Um, what happens when, when your vocal cords are vibrating in this mode? Well, the edge of the cord that opens and closes here is producing sound. And often that sound can have ping, it can have um, a lot of positive qualities but all of a sudden you're like why am I running out of air I'm running out of air what's going on and so we try to figure out the the action of of getting the cords to to stay more sealed but look at the cords here do you see how they're closed along this entire edge what's gonna happen if you think cord closure you're gonna squeeze more this part here. So if, if you're squeezing the middle of the cord because you're feeling that you're running out of air, you're not necessarily reducing the gap in the back. Do you see how this can be problematic? What you're seeing here, first of all, you see the arytenoids, right? So these cords are completely sealed. You see the back portion? Completely sealed. So what did this tell us? It means that the person that's phonating here has activated correctly both the lateral cricorytenoids swinging the arytenoids to, um, to the midline, closing the cords, and also the interretinoids were sealed, bringing those arytenoids closer together and sealing the back portion. See, there's no gap at all here in this back part. But now, all of a sudden, you get this. What in the world is this? Look how much air can escape through this. That's called the central gap. Why in the world would that happen in a vocal cord? Obviously, you have pressure that's causing the cords to buckle, to bow somehow, right? So instead of staying straight, they're doing this. The resultant sound that typically comes from that is a sine wave, a, a, a fundamental harmonic type production, yeah? Um, there's not a lot of strength harmonically that can occur when you get this kind of 
gap in the chord. Ladies, this is tricky for you because when you sing, for example, here, and you go down in head voice like that, you're going to open a gap. Why? Because you're trying to take the head mechanism down toward where the chest voice should be, and you don't have enough straightness in the chord to keep the pressure in check. So that gap tends to form and your voice suddenly becomes weak and that quintessential hole around F is formed. And now all of a sudden you either you either are singing or you go ah, ah, ah. Work on the contribution of the chest into your voices um, on slides and on a thin mechanism so chest, but thinner, with the tilt, with a cry. I have to say, I call it. I, I, I like calling it cry tilt now, just to fix these two ideas together. Tilting with a cry. So finding a thin kind of chest mechanism within the tilt. And I think that really helps to, to develop the necessary tautness in the core to keep the, the, um, the cords sealed.